In this lecture, we are going to begin looking at step two in our roadmap for creating a privacy program governance framework. Here, we are going to discuss how to define the program's scope. We will first ask how to identify scope and how to identify data collected. We will discuss GDPR Article 30. We will look at some questions to help us define the scope and then end with some business considerations. Again, here's our roadmap. We went over step one in the previous lecture, which was vision and mission statements. We are now in step two, which is defining program scope. So how do we identify the scope for our privacy program? What are we responsible for? Well, there are three things that we need to identify. First and foremost, what PII or personal data does our organization collect and process? Number two, what jurisdiction or jurisdictions does our organization fall under? And finally, number three, what are the applicable laws, regulations, and policies? And so if I am a healthcare organization that operates only in the United States, then one of the laws that I'm going to need to comply with is HIPAA. When it comes to identifying the data that your organization collects, there are essentially two ways of doing this. There's the manual way and the automated way. The manual way includes typically carrying out informational interviews with people throughout your organization. We're going to spend a lot of time talking about different business functions later in the course. But for right now, you can think about the different offices that are going to exist throughout a large or even a small organization. Human resources, legal, finance, marketing, etc. What are all of these different business functions? You're going to meet with those folks and ask them questions that we're going to look at in a little bit. For the automated approach, we have two major options. The first is going with a consultancy. That is not automated per se, but it does involve outsourcing that work to someone else. A truly automated tool would be something like a data discovery tool. There are many, many tools that are out there. If you go to your search engine of choice and you insert data discovery tool, or perhaps you go to YouTube and you put in data discovery tool, you're likely to find a lot of different demonstrations that can give you a better idea of what these tools do. But in short, a data discovery tool is going to scan your IT environment and learn about the different types of data that you have. And so a social security number in the United States, for example, is three digits, hyphen, two digits, hyphen, four digits, three, two, four. And so a data discovery tool will know that. It'll know that a United States social security number follows this pattern. That tool is gonna scan your entire IT environment and it'll come back with a final report where it tells you what data you have and where it is. And so for social security numbers, for example, again, it's looking for that format. It may identify that there are whatever, 5,000 social security numbers in this one file on this drive. And it's gonna do that for other types of numbers, driver's license numbers, financial account numbers, et cetera, et cetera. These automated options are gonna be more ideal for larger, more complex environments, and they can often be more accurate, detailed, and helpful than doing it manually. Similarly, an automated tool is gonna give you a summary or report, which is gonna be really helpful to your privacy program and may help support some audits or certifications that your organization does later down the road. Another GDP article that you need to know about is Article 30. And Article 30 deals with ROPA. You'll remember that this is an acronym for Records of Processing Activities. A ROPA is an overview of how personal data is processed by an organization. And it will include the data categories that are collected, the groups of data subjects, the purpose of processing, and the data recipients. And so who is receiving this data that is being collected? Article 30 and ROPA comes up throughout the body of knowledge, throughout the curriculum for the CIPM exam. And so while there are a lot of articles that are mentioned, Article 30 may be one of the ones that you are asked to identify based on number. So you definitely want to remember this one. When it comes to conducting informational interviews, some questions that you might ask to help define your organization's scope are as follows. 
who collects, processes, and accesses, PII, is the data that is collected, processed, and accessed, is it restricted to internal individuals, or are there parties external to the organization that access it as well? What are the types of PII? What is the collection purpose? What is the data life cycle? So think about the collection, think about the processing, think about the storage, the maintenance, the dissemination and sharing of the data, all the way to data destruction. So you wanna think about the how, the when, the why, et cetera. Again, is the data transferred? If it is transferred to whom? Is all of the data transferred or just part of it? You wanna identify retention and disposal policies. So how long are you retaining the data and at what point is that data disposed of? Is it destroyed? And you also wanna think about security controls. Now, a security control is gonna be a countermeasure that we implement to mitigate cybersecurity threats and risk. And so, for example, to prevent unauthorized access, modification, deletion, or exfiltration of data, our organization's network may use multiple firewalls. And the objective of the firewall is to allow only authorized data or traffic to enter and exit the organization's network. And so a firewall, hopefully, will help to keep out malicious actors. So a firewall is an example of a security control. And when we get to the protect section of the governance lifecycle, we will talk more about security and privacy controls. Finally, what are some business considerations to help us define scope? Well, we want to know what the business model is. For example, how does the business make money? Is the collection and processing of personal data central to that business model? If so, then we may have a higher risk appetite or tolerance for collecting, processing, disseminating, sharing, storing personal data. Which leads to the next question, what is the organization's risk appetite or tolerance? And these two terms, risk appetite and tolerance, are often used interchangeably, so we will consider them synonymous here. I've included both terms because you're likely to see either or both of them on the exam. In short, an organization's risk appetite or tolerance is the amount and type of risk an organization is willing to assume to pursue an objective, typically a business objective. And when it comes to the collection, processing, etc. of personal data, we can think about risk appetite as existing on a spectrum. One end of the spectrum, the more conservative end of the spectrum, might be a minimalist perspective. And this perspective would believe that personal data is toxic. We don't want to collect it. If we do collect it, we want the absolute minimum necessary. We are going to process that data, and then we are going to destroy it as soon as possible. The idea here is that personal data creates a liability, We are very risk adverse in this particular risk appetite or risk tolerance posture. And therefore, we only want to do what's absolutely necessary and then get rid of it. The opposite end of the spectrum would be a maximalist perspective. And the idea here is that more data is better. We want as much data as we can collect, even if we don't know how we're going to use it. We understand that this creates liability for the organization. However, We believe that the benefits, the pros, outweigh the cons. That having all of this data is ultimately going to benefit our business, help us achieve our objectives, and without this personal data, there's no way or no reason for the business to exist. And so again, minimalist, data is toxic. Maximalist, more is always better. And part of being a privacy manager is understanding what your organization's risk appetite is, And often that's going to require a conversation or two or multiple conversations with your organization's leadership. In this lecture, we have discussed how to define your program scope. There are typically three questions or three stages to identifying scope. You want to know what personal data or PII is collected, how it's processed, what jurisdiction or jurisdictions your organization falls under, and what the applicable laws and regulations are. You can identify the data collected either manually or through automated means. Remember, Article 30 is for records of processing activities. 
There are a number of different questions that you can ask stakeholders throughout your organization to define the scope. I will not reread those here, but of course you can hit pause and review them at your leisure. And finally, some business considerations. You wanna know what the business model is, what the organization's risk appetite or tolerance is. And when it comes to imagining or illustrating risk appetite, you can think about the minimalist maximalist data spectrum.